Hmm. Very interesting. Now that is an intro. It's me again. Welcome to Ham. Welcome to Ham Watches Things, tells you about the things, and then thinks about the things. It's the only show where Ham reviews. If you're having a bad day, buckle up, because the tone of this one will not make it any better. Hey, everyone! We got Max! What's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> it's Max. We, we're going to do this again. <laughs> we totally haven't done this four times. I don't I don't know why this always happens. <laughs> 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 Are we going with bear toss? Yep, bear toss. Old bear toss. Bear toss. That's the only one I have on deck. Welcome to Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Now this is a movie you haven't seen. Um, nope. No one has seen. So it makes it very hard to do reviews on movies that people have never seen before. But luckily for everyone else, I don't really get too specific about the movies. A 1989 made-for-TV movie, Trial of the Incredible Hulk, was another in a series of efforts to cash in on the then seven years dead TV show. It was also an effort to launch a Daredevil TV series, much like a film with Thor, which both were unsuccessful. The film actually had high ratings, but no. Maybe NBC was done with the hero game. Maybe they were worried about running against CBS's The Flash airing in 1990. Also, the comic media landscape shifted with Batman and film. It really kind of scared everyone from doing cheap comic TV at the time. Flash tried, but was not close. Although the tone of Daredevil may have done very well, he's super dark and kind of potentially Batman-ish, but Rex was 34 already at the time and about to play a full-time TV ninja. And lucky for them, they did not go down that path. By 91, they were all dead. The shows, not the actors. The movie. There's an introduction by Bill Bixby. Long story short, one too many x-rays, and he now becomes Green Lou Ferrigno in a Party City wig. He is the Hawk. Movie opens as sad and as pathetic as you would assume the life of an on-the-run, death-faking, giant, green rage monster and an old white dude is. This poor, weak fella is tossed in a mud hole, and a green rage monster within him compels him to quit his ditch-digging job. The Incredible Hawk. Supply Man gets hit in the face by a box in the closet. What kind of an introduction is that? Now, I know that that's Matt Murdock. But if you didn't, this is just another sad guy. This movie is already making me cry. Iced. The camera work here is not bad. Good use of urgency and tension, but all gets interrupted when you see fat Bill and Ted's George Carlin is pulling the strings. Two robbers escape to a train. The old sad guy is angry. Not sure if anyone should be concerned. Bad haircut one and two don't appear particularly excited about making him angry. That would be some sort of a nice catchphrase, I think. We now have the Hawk, and he hates trains, and it never stood a chance. He destroys the train with the bodies of the punks before he flees. Close your eyes. you just been hit with a glorious amount of gamma radiation. What color Hawk are you now? Blue. Blue. Weird. But not like... What blue? Sharpie blue? <laughs> you could be like a sad blue? Yeah. You could yeah. be like a sad, like a sky blue or like a navy blue? Like what What blue? Like my shirt blue? Yeah, I like the shirt. Maybe a little lighter. Shirt blue. But good. like, um, you like this, but a little darker. Like a little darker. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the blue hawk. Let's see what a blue hawk looks like. What's a blue hawk look like? Blue hawk. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. There's lots of blue so, hawks. There are blue hawks. Blue hawk. Oh, blue hawk. There's like a whole Yoshi universe of hawks. Like everyone's a different color. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so awesome. the, the blue hawk eats a shell and he gets wings. Hawk turns back into not hawk as he is arrested and meets Murdoch. I like the exchange here. Makes it clear why Murdoch took this case. He believes Fisk is behind everything. Belson is facing charges for murder. The tension is amazing. It's great dialogue. The victim of the train turns out to be plot victim again. She lies about the attack and it doesn't look good for Belson. Marta does a great job as the victim. 
She plays a woman who is in a bad situation, set up with a good hint she was visited by guys that coerced her story, and turned on Murdoch as a victim, being treated as a criminal in the whole situation. She also immediately changes her tone when she realizes that Matt Murdock is blind. It's just a superhuman moment. She tries to control the conversation as somebody who has lost control herself as a victim and of violence from the train and from having her story coerced and being threatened by others. She really is probably the most believable person I've seen in a comic book movie ever. Fisk gives the go ahead to kill Ellie. Before she can, clumsy ninja Gaiden electrocutes her. Um, so it doesn't hawk up much in this one. So actually it's more of a, uh, it's more of a daredevil, uh, kind of thing. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. I want you to close your eyes again. Now you're blind. You can't see anything because you're blind. Yep. So you hear things in sonar kind of fashion and you are listening to my voice right now. Like a bat? I'm not a bat, but well, me. I'm yeah, you're bat. a so you're a bat person, like a Batman. Bat <laughs> you're, you're a Batman. Uh, what? So listening, listening to my voice. What are you seeing? Universe. What? So I think that's the wrong universe. universe. That's right. Batman. That's true. Oh no, he doesn't exist. Um. So, okay, well, the, a Batman can exist in this universe. Now, it's an actual bat person man bat, and not... Man bat. Man bat. Well, man bat's in the other unit. You know what? You, you, you see things from the sounds of things. So, you, so I'm blind. You, so you're blind. <laughs> I don't okay. know if we established that yet or not. Got it. Okay. You are blind as a bat. Now, with the sound of my voice, what are you seeing? When, when you hear me talk, what are you seeing? Some kind of pork. <laughs> Maybe some starch. Uh, getting like a big, a big pot of ham, potatoes, and green beans right now. I think I might have some for lunch. You like wrestling podcasts? Oh boy, I'm a big time wrestler, and I love. Wrestling with Fans Podcast. Wrestling with Fans Podcast is a great place for friendly wrestling conversation, news, and reviews. Kyle does unboxing videos and occasionally brings on guests. Wrestling with Fans Podcast is found on all your major platforms. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and much, much more. So if you're in the mood for some wrestling conversation, check out Wrestling with Fans Podcast right now. Wrestlingwithfans.com. Oh yeah, that's that's some good wrestling. Yeah, that's wrestlingwithfans.com. Deputy Chief is upset. He blames Belson for the attempted murder. Belson doesn't seem too worried about people trying to kill him since he's the star of the film. It's very smart. The return of plot victim as she is now taken by Fisk. David Belson heads to trial and he gets angry. Turns out the courthouse finds the situation less than optimal when he gets angry. Hulk is back. Stan Lee flees the jury stand before it's flipped. David Belson wakes up in jail and he doesn't want to be there. This makes him angry. I think you know how the jail is going to feel about this situation. Nice to see Turk thrown in. He gives Daredevil the info he needs and probably turns his life around. Once Daredevil says, be very good, read a book, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Sorry, wrong walk. Daredevil is scanning the city and we finally get to see the world through Daredevil's eyes. Green on black 1980s computer screen. He tracks down Belson. Oh goodness, plot twist. Daredevil is Murdoch. Plot victim is in the web. Obviously, giant spiders from Mars was a film so boom the web so far being a comic book movie from this era relies a lot on coincidence and things like that because they can't make a lot of sense as these are you know comic book heroes and they have a lot of tough times with that making the story seem real this movie actually did a pretty good job of keeping things in order up until this point where we get a web clue giant spiders from space is a movie they happen to take her there happens to be something that they, everybody knows about as common knowledge. I don't know. 
This is pretty ridiculous as far as a coincidence goes. Turk is back, finally a happy character. He is busy making it rain in the bar when he stumbles upon the deputy chief. Turns out Daredevil did not turn his life around. He guesses correctly that the web is a setup and that Turk leaked the web story. It's a trap. Belson heads out to rescue Daredevil. We're winging it now. This movie is what it looks like when you've done a really good job setting up A through H and then K through Z in the script. So now we have that blank space between H and K. We went I, then T, then D, B, B again, seven, B again, and then J. Daredevil faces off with his arch enemy, Sound, and he is really outmatched. Belson is angry. The studio barn wall won't be pleased about this situation. It doesn't hold up well against green bodybuilders. Hulk tosses a few guys into some spark machines and saves Daredevil. So now, this is terrible comic book television 1989, right? You got a bad Captain America. You got a bad Flash. You got a bad Hulk, right? And now they're trying to relaunch a new show. And this show is going to either be Thor or Daredevil. It's terrible. They fell apart. They're saying, what's the next Hulk movie? I want to know what the next Hulk movie is. What character are we launching our new television show around? Thor's done. Daredevil's done. Who are you doing? Hmm. Okay. Well, this might sound a little weird. Okay. Hear me out. Hulk cat. Hulk cat. Hulk, hulking cat or a hulk, hulking cat? Hulk cat. It's a cat that hulks out. Hulking cat. Hulk incredible. The incredible hulk cat. Hulk cat. <laughs> it's going to be just as bad as all of the other movies. So it's a cat. So it, so what's the cat do? Like what, what does hulk do with the cat? Is it just getting blasted with radiation or something? Well, yes. Okay. Obviously, to be Hulk Cat. But, um... No, Hulk Cat just, you know, goes around helping out other cats. Make sure the dogs aren't, you know, being assholes. So it's just... So it hawks up, mm-hmm. and then it fights dogs. Yeah. Okay. I'm hating, I'm hating this show a lot. Yep, exactly. It yep. fits in with the theme of all that of the... That sounds terrible. What color is the Hulk Cat, though? What does the Hulk Cat become? Hulking Cat. Okay, so the the hulking cat, when it hulks out, it starts out as a hairless cat, right? <laughs> like a sphinx. <laughs> one of those most disgusting animals I've ever seen. It's so sad. It's such a sad <laughs> thing to say. I don't hate them. I just think they're gross. Well, what's it become? What's <laughs> I, just, I just think they're disgusting. What's the what's the cat? What's the hulk cat? What's a hulk cat look like? So it's a cat. Yeah. But it's bigger. It's a big cat. So it's a big hairless cat. Does it grow hair? Does it, it get gross big? hair? It grows hair. Kind of gross hair. What color is it? A little bit of everything. A little bit you know, of everything. Because you got hit by those gamma rays and really messed up the hair. Fall. What's that? What's the cat with the everything? Look? What's the cat with all the colors? There's cats that have all the colors. What's it called? Cats with all the colors. And it's got cat patterns. Cats with all the Tabby colors. Tabby cat. Like a tabby cat? See, I was right. Like a tabby yeah. cat. It's got like like three or four different colors in it. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Never seen a hawk go into like... What if it was a tabby hawk? Well, here's a hawk cat. That would be pretty cool. Got to, got catitude. We are just going to blaze to the end here. Seriously, they couldn't have less meaningless scenes in a row like this if they tried. Regroup. Kidnapped at the building. Daredevil and Belsinger at the building. Big baddie meeting. More bad news for plot victim. That was 15 minutes. What a waste. Daredevil wrecks some business individuals. Belson gets the plot victim out of the building. Daredevil clears the boardroom. Fisk escapes in his Flash Gordon vehicle cast off. Belson and Murdoch decide their love will go on, even after they go their separate ways. Where's the Hawk, you ask? The end. Belson will later be picked up hitchhiking and has to hire Murdoch as his lawyer. After a week in court, Hawk tears down the small West New York courthouse. Seven died in the incident, including Murdoch. His funeral will be this Saturday. So, let's be clear. 
Bill Bixby is not a great David Banner. He just isn't. He plays like a good, depressed, tormented man with no name, a hobo. But the David Banner part just, it isn't there. His acting is good as it is, so you could at least believe him as a hero and for somebody that you want to cheer for. But it's just so freaking depressing. On the other side, Rex Smith is fantastic. He is a believable lawyer, which is a good introduction to this character. Maybe a bit older, but the movie doesn't revolve around any particular timeline, so I don't think it's actually clear how old he should be. John Reese davies is a pretty good villain, but he's a terrible fisk. I don't like the look at all. Dollar store sunglasses and a creepy monitor fetish. Daredevil has done pretty well. Can't say a ton about it. It's a made-for-TV movie based on the Incredible Hawk TV series. This really isn't a bad movie. Lou is as good as he can be. Very imposing with the camera effects, but they're pretty sloppy and goofy at times. Hawk is used so sparingly in a movie with his name in the title. He only appears in three-second bursts when the plot calls for him. This really isn't about the Hulk at all. The Hulk bridges Daredevil in his own movie. It's not the other way around like it should be. This isn't a bad movie. It's an old movie. It's done as well as anything adapted from the comic books up until this point. So it's worth watching. I like the characters. The acting is better than you would expect and the settings are pretty good. Small, but they make sense. They don't insult the viewer too much on coincidence and accidental plot convenience. Unfortunately, it just is a Daredevil movie. I, en I enjoyed it. So the grade kind of bounces around a bit. I know I'm in the minority, but I enjoy B-flick movies like this, horror or comic. It definitely does not hold up for young viewers, and it did not age the way that people would have maybe hoped. But if you're into 80s sci-fi and horror, this is a movie you need to see. I'm giving it a strong C+. Max! Thanks for sitting with hey, me. Um, thanks, thanks for sitting with me. Of course. Anytime. Let's go. And that's all for me. What's next? Who knows? I'm Ham. Enjoy the movie. Have a great day.